Hi book lovers, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about steamy romances, steamy romance books that I've been reading lately and enjoying and loving. Not gonna lie, most of this video is just gonna be me talking about Nikki Sloan, who is an author that I've just been binging on. I read six of her books over the past one, two weeks, and I'll be talking about all six books in this video, but I do have some other books and some other authors that I've been loving and I'll be mentioning. But yeah, this is gonna be a recommendations video for a bunch of steamy romances so if you've been craving something really hot to read these books are going to be perfect. The first recommendation I have is Love Unexpected by Kiwi Tyler. This one is an age gap forbidden romance between a stepfather and a stepdaughter. It is quite taboo and it does play a little bit with daddy kink but y'all this book was so hot. It is one of the hotter books that I've read in a while. I mean I read so many romance books so much steam erotic romances that I've kind of become immune to to a lot of the stuff that I read, but this one was great. The story itself, the romance, is pretty surprisingly straightforward and simple given that it is a taboo stepfather stepdaughter romance, but it is fairly insta-lovey. There really is no huge obstacle because the mother passes away. So the romance for me it was fine but the sex, the smut in this book was amazing. So if you want to read this book purely for the smut you will have the best time. Like I said earlier this one has a pretty big age gap. The heroine Stasia is 18. She lives with her mother and her stepfather who she previously had a crush on when she first met him when she was really young. So I do have to say the hero Dominic has been the only father figure in Stasia's life but we never see on the page Dominic being that father figure because Stasia by the time she's 17, 18 she hates him. So even though he is a father figure we never really see fatherly vibes that makes it weird once they start having sex. But anyway the mother does die. She passes away in the beginning from an accident and the two of them are grieving and this grieving turns into Dominic and Stasia trying to find comfort in each other. The two of them go on this vacation together uh, trying to get away from everything that's going on and and of course when they're alone in this cottage together things heat up. The chemistry between them is crazy hot. Both of them do try to stop it, especially Dominic. I mean he was the one who was married to her mother but even though it's wrong between them it's still so freaking hot. Dominic is 41 but this man can go all night. He has a filthy mouth. They do it everywhere in every single way possible. I loved it. It was so dirty and hot. There are a lot of sex scenes in this book and sometimes I mean I get tired after maybe the fourth or fifth one but this one all of them hit right. I really never got tired of the smut. It was exactly what I wanted and what I was looking for. Outside of the smut some things could be developed a little bit more but honestly I didn't really care about anything outside of the smut anyway. I was just having a fun time reading this one. It's made me a huge fan of QB Tyler. It wasn't my first read from her. I read Forget Me Now which is her second chance romance but this one was the smuttier one. So if you love your age gap romances, definitely read this one. Also a bonus QB Tyler book that I want to mention is My Best Friend's Sister. I read this one after Love Unexpected. It's not quite as good as Love Unexpected, but if you want a novella that has the best friend sister trope, it's told from the hero's point of view and has some good steam, this one would be a good one to try. Another steamy romance that I loved was Lush Money by Angelina M. Lopez. This one, even though I own the paperback, I chose to listen to the audio. I borrowed it from my library and I loved it. I highly highly recommend the audio if you can. The narrator was amazing and I also loved listening to the Spanish in this one as well. But Lush Money is a royal romance and it's got a marriage of convenience. The hero is a prince who needs a lot of money to save his kingdom and his people. The heroine has lots of cash to spare. She's a self-made billionaire, a CEO billionaire, and she wants a baby. These two have something that the other one can give them so they strike a deal and enter a marriage of convenience. With this deal, Roxanne and Matteo will sleep together three times a month. The relationship starts off pretty poorly. They have a lot of angry hate sex in the beginning. Still hot though, but yeah, they don't like each other. Matteo especially does not like Roxanne because she was just too cold for him. She was making it too transactional for them, even though they did both sign a contract. But yeah, lots of hate sex in the beginning. It's really hot. The heroine Roxanne takes charge a lot, which was great. But I love these two. I love the angst and the emotion 
emotions. There's so much turmoil going on. Roxanne falls hard, but she has a hard time expressing herself, expressing her love and emotions. Matteo has a whole kingdom, a whole country of people to think of. But this theme was great. I love the chemistry between them, how it started from hate sex to something more. Also, the emotions in this one got to me. There's a scene where the heroine is crying and the narrator is, her voice is crying and I was about to start crying because it was so, so emotional. But yeah, the audio was great. I love this one. It was a fantastic debut. Next are all the books that I read by Nikki Sloan, all six of them. I read two of her series, the Nashville Neighborhood series and the Filthy Rich American series. There are three books in the Nashville Neighborhood series, but so far I only read the first two, The Doctor and The Pool Boy. The Doctor is a forbidden romance and another age gap romance. I mean, age gap romances are hot. This romance has a heroine who falls for her boyfriend's dad. So if you love Birthday Girl, if you love Your Dad Will Do, this book would be perfect. Cassidy, the heroine, is in college. She has a boyfriend named Preston who is currently living with his slightly estranged father. Greg, the hero, was never really a part of his son's life growing up because he chose to be a surgeon and to pursue his career over being a part of his family. But now he does want a relationship with his son, with Preston, which is why Preston is living with Greg. But Preston is kind of a dick. He doesn't care about his relationship with Cassidy anymore. And it's gone to the point where Cassidy is fed up and she breaks up with him. But then the day that she breaks up with Preston is also the day she ends up kissing his dad, kissing Greg. Things pretty much spiral out from there. Cassidy and Greg cannot keep their hands off of each other. They keep this hot ass affair from Preston, of course they know that Preston would blow up, but they're crazy hot together. Greg is a lot more giving, a lot more considerate of Cassidy than Preston ever was. It sucks to compare, but I mean, Greg just blows Preston out of the water. It was actually my second time reading this book, even though I thought it was my first time. I just completely forgot that I read this back in 2018 when this book released. I apparently gave it three stars on Goodreads the first time around, but I did bump it up a star the second time around because I guess my tastes have changed and I just enjoyed it so much more the second time around. Book two of The Pool Boy has another age gap. It's another age gap romance except this time it is the heroine who's the older woman. This is book two in the Nashville Neighborhood series but can be read totally fine as a standalone. Erica, this heroine, is neighbors with Greg from book one and Erica, who is a newly divorced woman, she falls for her best friend's son. Erica is honestly living her best life after divorcing her cheating husband she got a boob job. She has the hottest body that she's ever had her whole life. And then comes the pool boy, Troy, who comes in every week to clean her pool. But the one day she decides to go home early from work, she starts sunbathing by the pool. She takes her top off, showing off her new gorgeous boobs. That's when Troy, her pool boy, walks in and sees her topless. So this was the start of everything. I love them. I love the beginning, how everything started. After Troy catches Erica topless, they do a whole masturbation session together separate but still watching each other so that was hot and then they start this whole affair and it turns out Troy has had a huge crush on his mother's best friend for a very long time so he has a ton of fantasies he wants to act out Erica is more than happy to act out those fantasies she's exploring her sexuality that she never really got to explore while she was married so this book was great I love the smut I mean Nikki Sloan she writes some really good smut and even even though I do end up reading more romances with age gaps where the hero is older, I still do love an occasional older woman romance. After I finished those two books, I just inhaled the Filthy Rich American series. This is a four book series, though a fifth one is coming out later this year and I'm so so excited, but I was obsessed with this series for like a week. I could not put these books down, I love them, and unlike the Nashville Neighborhood series, these books can't be read as standalones. The first three books, The Initiation, The Obsession, and The Deception. These three books follow the heroine Maris. Book four, The Redemption, you might be able to read as a standalone. It's about a different couple, happily ever after at the end of this one, but I highly recommend reading the series in order. There's just a lot of things that happen in the first three books that lead up to what happens in The Redemption, but I love the series. It's basically about this very wealthy, very rich family. The Hale family pretty much own their town. They own this banking company that makes them royalty. The father, McAllister, is like the king of their town and his older son, Royce, is our hero in the first three books. The first three books 
have a marriage of convenience. I had no idea there was gonna be a marriage of convenience, but I mean, I love this trope. So the whole marriage of convenience thing, Royce is actually engaged to Marist's older sister, but then Emily gets pregnant by another man, making her ineligible to marry Royce. That's when Marist is forced to step in for Emily and marry Royce instead. And she unfortunately really has no choice but to marry him because her family is in debt. I won't say too much more about this series, but it is a really hot series. It almost becomes a love triangle between Royce and his father, but I mean, I knew going into the series that McAllister, the father, would have his own book. So we all know how the love triangle will turn out. There's a lot of kinky stuff going on, especially with the whole initiation for the Hale Banking Company. I will say if you don't like your heroine doing stuff with other men besides the hero, you probably won't enjoy the series, but I had no problem with it. I actually love when the heroines mess around. If heroes can mess around, I want the heroine to be able to do the same. So Marist gets involved in a lot of crazy stuff going on. There are so many secrets and lies. There is endless manipulation from Royce, from McAllister, and through it all, Marist has to keep her head on straight while reluctantly falling for Royce. So the first three books were just really great. I had a wild time reading them. I could not put the series down. I kind of rooted for McAllister more than Royce sometimes because he was just so much more interesting than Royce. But still, I did enjoy the way things ended in The Deception. But then book four, The Redemption, which is McAllister's book, Royce's father's book. This one is easily the best one of the series. I loved it so, so much. It's another age gap romance. It's a huge age gap. I think it's the biggest one that I've ever read. It's about a 30 year age difference. The heroine Sophia is 26 and McAllister is around 54, 55. So he is a hot older man, literally a dilf. McAllister has been a villain for the first three books and if you've ever wanted a villain to get his own happily ever after, this book is literally it. He becomes an anti-hero. He tries to redeem himself, restore his reputation. He is magnetic. He's powerful. He's alpha to the core. He is used to people doing what he says, which made Sophia the perfect heroine for him because she is one of the few people who can ever stand up to him. Sophia and McAllister have a deal going on. It gets a little bit complicated, so I won't talk about it too much because it does spoil some things from the first three books, but they have a deal going on. Sophia becomes McAllister's assistant, so office romance. Their relationship turns spicy. It is so, so hot. Surprisingly, it didn't turn spicy as quickly as I expected it to be, but once things do turn into the bedroom, it is so, so good. McAllister is just so dominating and powerful in bed. Like, his seduction of Sophia it was fire. The chemistry between them was insane. They have this little thing between them where he chooses the clothes that she'll wear to work, which means he knows exactly what's going on under those clothes. Also, Sophia has a clip piercing and I was like, okay, I like that. And of course, they play around with that whole thing. It was just so, so good, so hot. The romance is also so sweet, the way McAllister was with Sophia, who was so tender, so respectful. They were just perfect together. I love them. Even I did root for McAllister in the first three books, Sophia really was the perfect heroine for him. And like I said before, this one you could read as a standalone, but I just highly, highly recommend you read the first three books first. You get to see McAllister in all his villain glory, and being able to see him turn from villain to anti-hero, the payoff is just so much better if you read the series in order. And the last author whose books I want to talk about is, to no one's surprise, Jessica Kane. If you know me, you know I love Jessica Kane. She releases like a book or two a month, which is insane. When she releases a new book, I'll drop everything to read it because they're super short and super hot. My favorite of her recent releases was Breaking the Bully, which is her groveling romance. I mean, she's not new to groveling, but this one specifically was just literally all grovel. It's set in high school and college. The hero was the heroine's bully in high school. He bullied her for all the wrong reasons, and when he realizes that he messed up, that's when all the grovels started. Starts. So that one was great. I really love the angst. I love the grovel. And even though the characters are younger than Jessica Kane's usual characters and there's no huge age gap that 
she usually writes. It was still uh, crazy steamy. I mean, the main way that the hero grovels is between the heroine's legs. She released another thick hero romance called Bulky. It's kind of been her new recent thing, writing about thick heroes, fat heroes. So this one is another one of those. It's got the age gap. She's 18, he's 45. He is her best friend's dad. There is, of course, Daddy Kink. It is Jessica Kane after all, but instead of Daddy Kink, it's actually more like Papa Kink. But I like this one. It's not a favorite, but I did enjoy it. And then Jessica Kane released another novella in April called Bossed Around. This one was really interesting because it wasn't the typical Jessica Kane character dynamic. I mean, yes, it does have an age gap. He is Scottish. He's huge and scarred. It's a little play on Beauty and the Beast. But smut-wise, the heroine is actually a bit dominant. She's the one in charge when it comes to the sex, which is why this book is called Bossed Around. She's in charge of how he pleasures her, how how he gets off. The hero loves to be submissive and live for the heroine. It's still crazy over the top, but I did like this different kind of dynamic. Also, if you like the whole gigantic, almost seven foot tall hero being with a tiny, tiny heroine, this novella would be great. So those are the steamy romances, smutty romances that I've been loving lately. If you need some more steam in your life, give these books a try. Give these authors a try. If you have any recommendations for some smutty books though, please let me know. I'm always happy to have more steamy books in my life. As always, links to everything will be down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!